Good afternoon. We're here in the Sydney office of DCM Institute and I have with me Stuart Hutchin, managing partner of Stuart Brown Chartered Accountants. Stuart Brown is regarded as the leading financial advisory group for the aged care sector that's covering community care, home care, retirement living and of course residential aged care. Stuart is going to give a brief overview of how the reforms coming out of the Royal Commission are going to benefit uh, the, the business of the retirement village sector. And then we're going to have a brief discussion on what this uh, can mean for operators and village management. Stuart? Thanks, Chris, and thanks for the introduction and, and having us along today to present at this village summit. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so, as Chris said, we're just going to unpack a few things in relation to the aged care reform and really the opportunities that exist for retirement villages or retirement living in relation to the reforms and in particular around um, other opportunities to generate revenue and talking about concepts of assisted living and, and what are the, the, the additional funds that are flowing through into the sector generally, not just from for residential aged care, not just for home care, but opportunity for retirement living. So probably just to kick it off, um, what we know is government policy, the Royal Commission recommendations, uh, are all about keeping people in their homes longer. Uh, so, and, and where is their home? Where are they gonna get care? And what will the care look like? So when we talk about you know, people staying in their home longer, on our mind is the opportunity that exists for retirement villages to be looking after people in the um, later stages of their life. And I guess thinking about how they will get care in a retirement village setting. We've been talking for a number of years now that you know running retirement living is no longer just about having a retirement village unit and what goes with that. There's an expectation of some level of additional services or care. One of the things we do know about people getting care in their homes and this ongoing concept is most people's homes weren't built to receive care at all. So they're not built for purpose. And that's where the opportunity really exists for retirement villages to either refurb, redesign their exi existing building stock or building new stock that is built for purpose that there will be a care element in retirement living. You mentioned 80,000 new packages coming on. This is on top of another 40 to 60,000 have come in the last 20, 24 months. But That's right. That 80,000 the average of $30,000 a package or thereabouts? That's right, we will so be... So that, that's $2.4 billion, just to, for the audience sake. Yes. That's the sort of money we're talking about. Yes. And yep. if user pays comes in on top of that, yes. that takes us easily to $3 billion a year. That's right, and the overall investment that we're seeing from the most recent budget over this time for in, in that sort of home care space is around $7 billion. So there's significant money coming in that is an opportunity for villages to, to get a piece of the action, if you like. There is a profitable return and a profitable EBITDA by running home, a home care business. And then if we're running it in part of your retirement living with assisted living, there's an opportunity, not only will your new residents, your consumers, be wanting their retirement village space, but they're also going to be wanting care. They'll be expecting. They'll be expecting, yeah. The demand will be there. We've seen clients that are, that are earning up to $10,000 EBITDA, so cash result, profitability, for the year up to 10,000 per client per year. The average in our first 25% in the benchmark survey performers, the average is around $6,109. Uh, per client per year. So what does all that mean? Your village residents are going to be demanding and expecting they're going to get some care and we're already seeing that and there are already models out there. But what it means is that if you're able to go out and advertise, have the, have the facilities for it, that as a village operator you can make money from this too. And that's important because you'll be able to reinvest that in the services you deliver your building stock, and of course, you need a return to the bottom line. When we talk about the um, the average return, so we've we've just spoken from two and a half thousand dollars up to ten thousand dollars. The reality is that retirement villages are perfectly placed for that 
top level because yes. of the efficiency of having, if you have 100 residents and 50 of them are receiving home care packages, the efficiency of delivering those services to them. Yes. So uh, your poor um, nurse isn't getting in a car and dri driving for half an hour to each right. location. So yes. the efficiency is significantly greater. So if, uh, let's say, let's split the difference and say it's $8,000 profit per year for a retirement village that has got 50 residents, 50 of the 100 are on a home care package. And that is going to be increasingly so because of dementia specifically. Um, that's uh, $350,000 net profit to the bottom line. That's right. And as you say, whilst uh, the, the discussions around profit and needing to make it, obviously no mission without margin. You that's need right. to make that money to be able to reinvest back into the, the village. Absolutely. A normal uh, domestic home with steps and all the usual trip hazards and difficulty of getting out to the shops to get food, so nutrition is declining and so on. Mm. You, you've said that the average home care package is say two years. Yes. So let's call it 80 to 82. Yes. Uh, in a retirement village, uh, the ex it, it, it is uh, statistically proven that people live longer in a retirement village because it's a safe and secure environment. They're also getting the right nutrition and so on. but as they get older and still receiving home care packages, they're going to be getting more of those services, aren't they? That's right. So it's only natural that they, they will use more services and then instead of being for two years, it's, it's probable that it'll be for three years. Absolutely, yes. Therefore, we're going off uh, script here, uh, <laughs> Stuart, but would you like to quickly explain uh, the one point of assessment concept? Because really it is going to be for the future of Yep. Uh, engaging with a consumer earlier, this right. one point of assessment yes. is uh, going to be vital for everybody in that chain all the way through to residential care, isn't it? That's right, yes. So one entry point of care is what we're talking about and that is when you enter the sector, if you like. So that, you know, that first entry point is at low level care in the community. Now that can be, that can be in a day centre, it can be in a a home care environment, it can be in a retirement village. So you want to have contact with someone entering the sector early on. You know, it's that I want a client for, for life sort of thing. And then being able to provide all those services as they have their journey through aged care or journey through retiring or retirement living, that they can access some low level wellness programs, social programs, outings, special events and meals and things like that and then it elevates you might want some cleaning some laundry and things in your village um, meals is really important as well and then you move on to needing you know care services and support services and knowing that there's some form of 24-hour support as a you know security item as well to recap at the moment that the major point of assessment for uh, care services is your ACAT. That's correct, yes. And that happens here. Yes. But what the government is now proposing, and that's where you really enter the government system. Yes. What the government is proposing is that you, they're going to recognise you way back here, which could be five, seven, ten years earlier. That's right. Uh, and establish your record with the government. Yes. Uh, and the services and the support that you have. So as you build familiarity with your suppliers way back here and your loyalty to the suppliers, it makes it harder for the people yes. way, way up here to get access to you. That's right. So again, for, a, for business survival, uh, it's so important for all operators to be, have community engagement, which is another subject for uh, yes. the, the Village Summit. Community engagement happening down here mm. to mm. capture the client first. And there's going to be a lot of competition in that. This, this is going to be a marketing and yes. sales free-for-all in this right. section, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Interesting too is, you know, we talked about the models that exist now, but we're working with a number of different clients who have always been residential aged care providers. Um, both private and not-for-profit, and now they're very much turning their attention to building retirement living with, no doubt, it's going to be assisted living with care element, but they're, you know, it's really difficult to get a return in residential aged care, so they're looking at retirement living, 
and how they'll get a return there along with the home care element, but also, as you mentioned, capturing that client early on in the process and getting them in, in a sense on their name, working with that organisation early on. So the skill sets for the village manager who at this, at the, this point in time for an independent, traditional independent living retirement village under the Act, where the, they have a, a responsibility role for the residents, but it's as great as a responsibility role to the operator to manage the assets, to look after the assets. That's right. Um, going forward to this new, uh, new world, they are going to be deeply involved in this community engagement, aren't they? They are, absolutely. Because they're going to be the face of yes. the village in the local community. Mm. And just remind us again when the um, one point of entry comes in, about two and a half years away? That's right, yes, yep, 2023. So, um, and uh, we'll, we'll, the education piece for village managers to understand all of those parts, it's a growing role, isn't it? So how will they, they get their education? What will be their responsibility? But you're right, all of these things are coming pretty fast. We've sort of got, you know, two years, we've got you know, another 40 packages in one year, another 40 the year after. We've got discontinuation of ACAR and RESI on the 1st of July 2024. All of the, you know, the five pillars of the government's response to Royal Commission is, is coming pretty quickly. So, so it's time to act, if you like, and it's a good time attending um, these summits and understanding what um, education is available to everyone within the setup of a village, the village manager, um, people involved with the admissions, the sales, all those sorts of things are going to be really important going forward. So it would be safe to say, and Stuart Brown would be the leading um, advisory group at board level across the country for aged care operators and retirement village operators, management has historically given 90% of its time to residential aged care yes. and 10% perhaps to across home care and uh, that's right, yes. retirement living. But uh, we hear that that's going to pivot such that management and boards are going to be putting at least 50% of their time against that, that early journey section. That's right. And, and that one entry point and, and exactly what you just said is where the, the whole sector has been changing and continues to change. We've seen for too long the silos, you know, residential aged care over here, retirement living here, home care here, Commonwealth Home Support. It all needs to come together now and everybody needs to be together and focused on all areas and the importance of the, the flow of um, your, your consumer, your resident, your client through the system. So that's going to be really important as part of strategy for the boards, executive management, but management on the ground as well, that everybody is aware of where our focus needs to be. So for uh, village management, to my mind, it's a very exciting future because w when there's change, there's opportunity, isn't yes, there? Yes, that's right. Uh, and the upskilling that's going to be required and the diversification of skills is going to be massive. And dare I say, the teams are going to build, aren't they? Yes. But the pivotal point is going to be the person who gets the customer. That's right. Yes, <laughs> yep. That's exactly right. How do we capture that customer? And it, you only have to go take a step back and look at the major reform for home care when it deregulated in 2017, which prior to that was mostly made up 90% or something of not-for-profits. We block funding before we had consumer directed care in 15. Uh, and that's completely changed and everybody, key positions need to be re-educated about what their roles are through that process. And the marketing was became paramount. The competition grew and getting that first phone call of someone that do you have, you know, do you have a place for me to stay? Do you have services? What services do you have? How much does it cost? What do I need to do? Is that capturing that, that, you know, capturing the client on day one? And there's really good KPIs around all those sorts of things about how quickly you return a phone call and how that converts to being, you know, a client of the business.
Thank you, Stuart, for a really enjoyable conversation. The, the future is exciting. Um, the future in terms of the funds that are going to flow through the sector, both from the government and the increasing user pays. Uh, and the re reality also is that the results for the resident is going to be far better, isn't it? That's because right. Because there's now real resources coming to true home care. That's correct. Yeah, absolutely. So, so thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, Chris.